my family was in ranching for years, and uh, yet by the time Ken and I decided to own bison, you know, the ranching was done. There was no connection to the land because the ranch had been sold, so we started from scratch. When we first started off, it was pretty much a business, and we, we knew that we loved the meat, but we didn't know that much about the animals. But after we've, now we've owned the animals for about 12 years, and it seems that the more time we spend with them, the more amazed we are at how intelligent they are and how spirited they are. And uh, the more time you spend with them, the better it gets. You know, the most important practices we focus on in raising our grass-fed bison is, is just a hands-off approach. They're wild creatures. They do just fine without any help from us. So we provide grass. We let the family units stay together. The bulls are with the cows year-round. Uh, we provide a fence. And the animals do the rest. They're extremely hardy. They don't need the coddling that a lot of domestic livestock do need. And um, we're, we're so blessed to have them here. We don't use any kinds of feedlots or hormones or antibiotics. The animals just eat the grass that we grow. Um, and we're very, very um, insistent on not using any chemicals in that process either. Oh, the bison meat is amazing. It, the flavor is very similar to beef. I mean, for people who've never had it before, it would remind you more of beef than anything else. Slightly sweeter, fuller flavor, but unlike beef, bison meat is 25% more protein, less fat and cholesterol than turkey, and because we don't put our animals in a feedlot, now you have all the nutrients that come from the grass, the beta keratin, the omega-3-6 ratio is right where it should be, on par with salmon. The most satisfying thing about what we're doing is that we are building something of value that is not controlled by somebody else. That is something that we can do for ourselves and in our own fashion. And we really believe that all of the effort that, that it takes place to do this, it's nice after my wife and I had spent some 30 years in corporate America, basically working for other people and building up what they were building, it's a nice switch now for us to spend our effort and our time building something for ourselves. Plus the fact that it is so valuable to so many other people, uh, our customers of course, especially. But we also think that restoring a heritage animal to the state of California that's been essentially out of this area for the last 500 years is an exciting thing to bring them back. Our customers have become our friends. They trust us. Um, we provide a clean red meat. We can look them in the eye as the producer and tell them how this meat has been treated during its lifetime, how it's been ethically harvested. This builds a great deal of trust um, with the community out there, and that has been lacking in um, other areas of meat production. There is something um, mystical about them. There's a connection that you can make with them that you wouldn't typically assume you would make with an animal. It's very difficult to articulate because it's on many levels. You know, it's love for the animal, love for what they represent, um, love the meat, that's just part of it, and it's a profound privilege to, to be uh, sharing space with them on our own ranch.